Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start as always by giving all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah Bahasham Rakakudash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful to let I get him out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah has created us to do. So he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations. But your father's seed line of your lineage goes back to you being a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American. One of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Hey, Shalom. It's your brother Halakia from the GMS Denver camp coming back once again. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah with another lesson. And this lesson is going to be another part, uh, the second part to uh, his unchangeable counsel. Counsel, you see, where we go into the prophecies and show you everything that the Most High has promised to do for His people, according to the you know to the promises He made, to the oath that He made, man, and that it, it doesn't change or it is is not alterable. You see, because the pagan Christian churches lied to the world, telling them. That the Most High has changed his mind about the promises and the oaths that he made unto his people. You see? And that's not the case. Now what we're going to do, do is, the first part we went into the first half of Jeremiah 31. And now we're going to go into the second half of Jeremiah 31 where it talks about us being brought into that new covenant. You see, and it all goes back to a promise and the oath that the Most High made unto our forefather Abraham. Now before we get into this, I want to pull a few things. Uh... Let's get rid of that. Let's go here to uh, Genesis. Look at that. It's already here. Genesis 17 and 7, it says, And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be a power unto them and, and to thy seed after them. You see that? This is what Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is in the process of bringing us, bringing us into to fulfill this oath that he made unto our forefather Abraham. You see? And this covenant is only for the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. It's not for all nations. And let's prove that real quick. Let's go to Psalms 105. Let's show you. Psalms 105, we'll start at verse 6. It says, O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is Yahweh our power. His judgments are in all the earth. He have remembered his covenant forever. You see that? He have remembered his covenant forever, letting you know that it hasn't been disannulled as the pagan Christian church, church has been teaching the world. He's remembered his covenant forever, says what? The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his, and his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. You see that? That still stands to this day. This hasn't been changed, man. And let's get another one real quick to prove that. Malachi 3 and 6, it says what? For I am Yahweh, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So the Most High has never changed his mind, man. He, he's never going back on his word because that would make him untrustworthy. That, would, that wouldn't make him faithful and true if he was always changing his mind or altering, you know, what he said he was going to do. See, that's what man does. The Most High doesn't do that, man. If the Most High say he's going to do something, best believe it's going to get done. You see? So as we talk, so as we go into the, the, uh, the second covenant, we have to understand why we need to be brought into this as a people. You know, because we're in this wicked flesh and we need to be saved from it. Because being in this flesh is what separates us from our power. Because this flesh is subject to sin, man. And this is why... The fall of Israel was, was so great because we kept following after the flesh. You see, because the flesh, it doesn't want to do good. It doesn't want to follow the ways of the Most High. And saying, if you don't have the Spirit of the Lord upon you to, to fight those urges, man, you fall short. And that's what happened with our entire nation. The entire nation of Israel fell away from our power because of our disobedience in this flesh. And let's get this in Daniel real quick. Daniel 9, and we're going to start... Uh, We 
We'll start at verse 3. It says what? Daniel 9 and 3 says, And I set my face unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah, to seek my to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes in the state of mourning, right? Verse 4 says what? And I prayed unto Yahweh my power, and my and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful power, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him, and to make and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. And the entire nation is guilty of this, man. You see? Verse 6 says what? Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants the prophets, which spake in the name of our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. You see that? So all of Israel has been rebellious against the prophets. And you see here in these final days, the two-thirds are still in the spirit of rebelling against the Most High. You see that? It's the same shit they was doing when we was back in the land of Israel, man. And that's why we got cast out of our land. This is why we went into captivity and slavery up under the heathen nations. Because of that disobedience. Verse 7 says what? O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces as, it, as at this day, to the men of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off. You see that? Through all the countries where thou hast driven them because of their trespass, that they have trespassed against thee. So this is why we were scattered as a nation. This is why the Most High has punished us because we transgressed against Him. We broke that. We broke that covenant. You see. So the Most High punished us and put us up under the curses, just like He said He would do. Verse eight goes on to say, "What, O Lord, to us belong, to us belong with confusion of face, to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against Thee. To Thee." Lord, our, to, to thee, Yahweh, our power, belong mercies and forgivenesses, though, though we have rebelled against them. And this is what we're in the process of receiving. We're receiving forgiveness from the Most High through our faith in Yahweh Shah. You see that? Even though we was in darkness at one point in time, the Most High is allowing us to turn, return back unto him through his son, Yahweh Shah. Verse 10 says what? Neither have we obeyed the voice of Yahweh our power to walk in his way, to walk in his laws, Salakia, which he set before us by, by his servants, the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by the pardon, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of, of the Most High, because we have sinned against him. And there it is. So because of our transgression and rebellion and the breaking of that first covenant, the Most High poured those curses upon us just like he promised he would do. You see, when he first made, it, made that covenant with us in the wilderness, man. This is why our nation is in the condition that we're in now. This is why we suffer the way we suffer now. You see, we're, we're, we're still receiving that punishment of being up under the curses by transgressing and disobeying the Most High, by walking in rebellion. And the entire nation is guilty of this, man. Verse 12 says what? And he have confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven have not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem. Because people come up and say, well, all nations have suffered some some type of uh, catastrophe at some point, but not to the not to the extent. That the nation of Israel has uh, uh, has experienced it, man. No nation has suffered what our nation has suffered on this earth. Because we're being punished by the Almighty. You see, because what? We are his special people. He gave us a way to walk in. He gave us statutes and ordinances that we were supposed to obey. We didn't do that. So he poured that curse upon us heavy, man. You see, we received double for our iniquity, man. Right? But now, here in these last days, 
the Most High is allowing the remnant to return back unto him, and they're going to be the first ones to be brought into the second covenant for our nation to be healed once and for all when it's all said and done. That's what we're going to go into today when we're going to this Jeremiah 31. You see? Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is in the process of, of establishing a new covenant with his remnant. And through the remnant, the two thirds will, will be reborn into the kingdom of heaven in their right mind according to the second covenant, causing our nation to be healed perpetually, man. Every Israelite that's going to be reborn in the kingdom of heaven is going to be born into that second covenant. And, and our nation will know unrighteousness or sin or a transgression or iniquity ever again. You see? This is what's being done. This is what the Most High is doing according to the promise and that oath that he made unto our forefather Abraham. So like, let me grab some water real quick. Now let's get into it to show you what's going to be done and that this hasn't been changed at all, man. Because if, if the Most High doesn't fulfill this or bring this to pass, that will make him a liar. Oh, before we move on, before we move on, let's get my favorite, man. Numbers 23. <laughs> and this is simple. And this is simple scripture, but it's, it's very heavy, man. It solidifies everything that we read. Numbers 23 and 19 says what? The Most High is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken and shall he not make it good? Exactly. So everything that we read in these scriptures that the Most High has promised through the mouth of his prophets, through those oaths that he made unto our fathers, they will be done because the Most High doesn't lie. The Most High doesn't speak for the sake of speaking, man. Every word that the Most High utters, it has a purpose. And that purpose will be fulfilled. Let's get another one real quick. Isaiah 11. It's like 55 and 11. It's like here. It says what? So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So with that understanding that everything the Most High says has a purpose to it and that purpose will be fulfilled. Let's go back and show you what's going to be done for the Most High's people according to what the Most High has spoken. His counsel, His will, you see? So this is Jeremiah 31 and 31. We're going to read it in the GNT. It says what? Yahweh says, The time is coming when I, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. That goes into all 12 tribes, northern and southern kingdom, beginning with the remnant. This is what you see happening. And this is why you see so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans banding together through the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Shah and preaching this 100% doctrine, man. And I'm talking about the men of Great Millstone and those brothers who preach the same doctrine as Great Millstone. If you're not pre preaching 100% truth, this doesn't pertain to you, man. Yahweh Shemi Yahweh Shah is, is establishing this second, this second covenant with the remnant of Israel that was prophesied to return. Matter of fact, let's get that real quick. Let's get Isaiah. Ten to twenty, there it is. You see, and you can't be a part of this remnant unless you're doing what the Most High says to do. You have to be believing upon your Hawa Shah, and, and if you've been set up to teach, you have to be teaching the right thing, man. You can't just be out here remixing the Most High's doctrine, basically putting words in the Most High's mouth and saying the Most High said things that He didn't say. That's not how it works, man. As as a servant of the Lord, you 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 preach what you've been commanded to preach. You see. Rightly dividing the word, man. So this is Isaiah 10 and 20. It says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. And this is what you see happening. The, the remnant we're turning away from our, uh, from our captor, you see, and we're cleaving unto our power, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. We're not leaning upon Esau for the answers anymore, man. We don't need Esau, Esau for shit. We don't need him to tell us that we're the Israelites. We know through the Holy Spirit that we are. We understand and know that us doing this work is, is evident that we are the children of Israel. Because like it tells us, the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. And we're fulfilling 
and doing everything the most I said his people would be doing here in these last days. We don't need Esau to validate us, man. We're not looking to Esau for no damn validation. Because we know that they're not set up to lead us in the proper way. They're set up to do what? They're set up to lead our people astray and to keep our people in darkness, man. That's why they never gave us this truth. That's why they never told us that we were the Israelites, man. So the remnant will be reawakened in these last days through the Holy Spirit and they will turn back to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, and say, To hell with Esau, man. That's what we're doing. Verse 21 says what? The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty power. For though thy people, Israel, be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decree shall overflow with righteousness. For Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shav Host will make a consumption even determined in the midst of all the land. So the consumption decree with righteousness is going to be what? Who's going to be consumed? Two thirds of you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You see? Because you refuse to repent and turn back to the Lord, you're going to be destroyed here in the land of America, while the remnant is going to be saved. And and and, and how is that? They're going to be taken up into that chariot with Yahweh Shah to be brought into the second covenant that we're reading about. You see, because it begins with the remnant being saved, and the rest of Israel will be saved through the remnant over the over the process of time in the kingdom of heaven. You see that? So let's start again. Jeremiah 31 and 31 in the GNT. Yahweh says, The time is coming when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the old covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt. Although I was a husband to them, they did not keep my covenant. And that's what we just read in, in Daniel 9. The Most High made that covenant with us in the wilderness and we broke it. We couldn't, we couldn't, so like you, we couldn't fulfill that first covenant in perfection because that's what that covenant calls for. That's something that we couldn't do. Why? Let's show you real quick. Romans 8. And 20. Yup. Romans 8 and 20, it says what? For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because in his flesh, the Most High set it up for us to go off. He programmed us to go off. You see? We were never meant to keep that first covenant in perfection. Even though that's what it calls for, it's something that we could never do here in these bodies. You see? This is why we have to be upgraded when Yahweh Shah returns, and that's what's going to be done. So we've been, we, we have been made subject to vanity, folly, to go off, to sin. So we can be subject to what? Hope. You see, having hope and faith in Yahweh Shah that he's coming to change us and to bring us into this thing that the Most High has promised to do for us. And that's what's about to happen. This is what we're subject to now. Hope of being made as Yahweh Shah is. So we will never sin again. So we will never go off again. And that's what, that's what the remnant is longing for. We're longing to be in that perfect state. And that's, hey, that's what, we're, that's what this path is leading to. You see? Now, let's go back. It says what? Uh, verse 33. It says, The new covenant that I will make with the people of Israel will be this. I will put my law within them and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. And we read that phrase all the time all throughout the scriptures because it goes back to that oath that the Most High made unto our forefather Abraham. Of bringing his seed into an everlasting covenant. And the Most High swore upon himself that he would do this. And you see that phrase all throughout the scriptures. Every time you see, I will be their God and they shall be my people. The Most High is alluding to us being brought into that second covenant. A covenant of complete righteousness for the children of Israel. Never to sin, never to transgress, never to commit iniquity. But to be completely perfect in the law, statutes, and commandments. You see, we're going to fulfill everything that's written in perfection in the kingdom of heaven. This is the Most High's counsel, and it hasn't changed. Let's see if I can find another one real quick. I know it's another one in Ezekiel. Um, where it says the same thing. Oh, you know what? Let's do it like this. That's what we we'll get to search for. Uh, 
Oh, you know what? There it is, Ezekiel 36. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, now listen to this. Now, we're going to go right here, Ezekiel 36, and we'll start at 22. It says, Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whether you went. And how did we profane the Most High's name among the heathen? By walking in their customs, by practicing their wicked ass lifestyle, by worshiping the, the, these false idols that the heathen worship. That profanes the Most High's name because the Most High's name is put upon the nation of Israel. And we haven't been conducting ourselves, you see, as the Most High told us to conduct ourselves. This is why he basically uh, disowned us for a while, man. And we couldn't come back unto him until he sent our sacrifice, Yahweh Shah. And now that access back to the Most High has been uh, being, being reestablished through the Lord, Yahweh Shah. You see? Verse 23 says what? And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh, saith the Lord Power. When I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes, and, and, it's, and it's beginning with the remnant first and foremost. You see, the, the, the heathen nations are witnessing the remnant return back unto the Most High, and we're glorifying his name. We're letting the world know what the will of the Most High is and what he's going to do on this earth. We're letting them know that Yahweh Shah is going to return to take the heathen down, beginning with the Edomites, to establish a kingdom of, of righteousness in the earth forevermore. You see? Separating ourselves from this world, we don't conduct ourselves like these people in the world, man. And because we do this, they find it strange. But it's all for what? The sanctification, you see, of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Now, listen, verse four, uh, 24 says, For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries, and I will bring you into your own land. This is the process that we're in right now. The remnant is being reawakened and we're being prepared to receive salvation once the Lord Yahweh Shah makes his second coming. From all the land that we have been scattered to, especially from here in the land of America, which is Babylon the Great. Verse 25 says what? Then will I sprinkle water, like, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. This is us being transitioned transitioned and being brought into this second covenant that we're reading about in jeremiah 31 you see it says what a new heart also will i give you and a new spirit will i will i put within you and i will take away your stony heart out of your flesh and i will give you a heart of flesh and i will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and ye shall keep my my judgments and do them that's us being brought into that second covenant being completely changed and bought into the fullness of serving Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah and perfection. A completely new righteous body that longs to do righteousness, not like this wicked flesh that we're in right now that has urges to sin. You see? The Most High is about to upgrade us, man. He's going to exalt us and bring us back into our Godhood. That perfect state that we were in from the beginning. That's what we're being brought into. You see, and that's a cut to those people who are calling themselves the Jews because they're not fulfilling the Most High's laws. They're not doing what the Most High says to do. When you look over there to that land of Israel, all you see is nothing. Uh, wick is wickedness going on, man. That's not what would be going on with the Israelites when they go back into the land. You see, as we're reading, according to prophecy, right? Because that's all that matters, what the Most High said. The ones who are going to fulfill walking in the Most High's laws, statutes, and commandments in perfection are us so-called so blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans beginning with that remnant that the Most High is allowing to return unto him through our faith in the Lord Yahweh Shah. You see? Now listen, verse 28. 
and ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers as an everlasting possession. You see, that hasn't changed. And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. You see that? The Most High is telling us that he's going to fulfill that promise that he made unto our forefather Abraham. And matter of fact, let's go back real quick. Let's go back to Genesis real quick. Let's get some more of that bone. Genesis 17. And we'll read 7 again. It says, And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their, in their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. You see that? The Most High reiterates this all throughout the scriptures. A, and it continues all the way to the New Testament, showing you that the Most High hasn't changed. Showing you that he's, he's not altered this promise that he made unto our forefather. You see? This still stands and it must be fulfilled. And it will be. Now we can go here. Go back to uh, Jeremiah 31. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Let's keep going. So we are Jeremiah 31 and 34. It says what? None of them will have to teach a neighbor to know Yahweh, because all will know me. From the least to the greatest, I will forgive their sins and I will no longer remember their wrongs. I, Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shah, have spoken it. There it is. All of our transgressions and our and our sins and our iniquities that we committed as a nation, the Most High is going to come. Hey, He's going to hit a factory reset, man. To forget about it forevermore. It stops more. You see? Oh, let's let's look. Uh, let's see if we can find that. Is this what I'm looking for? You see. We'll do we'll start at verse eighteen, it says, matter of fact. We'll start at verse 18. It says, Micah 7 and 18. Who is a power like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? You see that? The remnant, the sins of the remnant are going to be forgiven first and foremost through their faith in Yahweh Shah. See, that's how our sins are forgiven by believing upon the, mo the one the most I sent for us, you know, to save us, man. It begins with that remnant of his heritage because through the remnant, the rest of the nation of Israel will be reestablished in the earth forevermore. You see, he says what? He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. And that's what he's showing towards the remnant of Israel. Verse 19, he will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities and thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. To be completely forgotten forever. It says what? Well, thou will perform the truth to Jacob. And the mercy to Abraham. Which thou hast sworn unto, their, unto our fathers. From the days of old. You see? He's, he's doing it man. Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah is doing exactly what he said he would do. It was another one I was looking for. Saying that the sins of Israel shall be sought after, but they shall not be found. I want to see that one. Um, Did 
there it is called Lo Yabba Shem Yom Shah the water this is Jeremiah 50 and 19 it says and I will bring Israel again to his habitation and he shall feed on Carmel and Bashan and his soul shall be satisfied upon Mount Ephraim and Gilead because we're going back to that land that the Most High gave unto our fathers for an everlasting position we're going to be taken back into our inheritance man verse 20 says what in those days and in that time saith Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for and there shall be none and the sins of Judah and they shall not be found for I will pardon them whom I reserve. You see, the sins of the remnant are being forgiven. To be forgotten forever. Showing you that no, no matter what the, the, these, these heathen try to uh, accuse us of, man, the remnant have been, Lord willing we be a part of that number, the remnant have been forgiven of their sins and their iniquities, man. You see that? This is us being brought into that second covenant, you see? Now, I wanted to get something in the book of Revelation to show you how this all ties together, that this is not some separate book. Uh, and how, because like these, what these pagan Christians do, is they try to take this New Testament and act like it's it's a cert, a, a different, you know, thing that the Most High is doing in the earth. No, it's, it's everything that the Most High promised to do according to what he's spoken in the Old Testament. It all goes hand in hand. Everything that was taught in the New Testament, it, Testament is based and founded upon what was written in the Old, man. You see, so, uh, let me see. There it is. So this is uh man, we gotta start, we gotta start at verse one. This is Revelation twenty one and one. Now remember what I told you about that phrase. We read it in Genesis, we read it in Jeremiah, we read it in Ezekiel. We, hey, and if you want to, you can go read it in Hebrews chapter eight, if I'm not mistaken, because the Apostle Paul reiterates the point that the Most High is going to establish this new covenant with His people. You see, that's a cut to those uh, people who are saying that the Old Testament is done away with. If that was the case, why would the Apostle Paul be quoting from uh, the book of Jeremiah? Basically reiterating the point that the, the second covenant is going to be brought to the Most High's people. Why would he say in, in, in uh, Romans 9 as well that the new and the old covenant pertains to the Israelites? Showing you that the Old Testament has not been done away with, man. That's just some BS that the pagan Christian church pushes to try to include everyone, you see, into the promises that the Most High only made to, to his people, the Israelites. Let's get it. This is uh, Revelation 21 and 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. This new heaven and a new earth is us coming into our rulership. The kingdom of heaven being established. The first heaven and the first earth is what we're living under now, man. The heathen reign. You see? The heathen rulership. The heathen age. Which ends with Esau's empire being completely dismantled when the Lord Yahweh shall returns. Verse 2 says what? And I, John, saw the holy city. New Jerusalem coming down from the most high of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And this is the remnant coming down after being saved. So it's a whole process that takes place before we have to come down. We have to be what? We have to be changed. We have to go through that crowning ceremony. And, you know, every man has to get their their reward from Yahweh Shai. No, we don't know how exactly how it works, but we know that we might be up there for a while because we all have to receive crowns from the Lord's hands, as it tells us in the book of Second Ezra, chapter two. So that's going to take a while. It's not going to be some we take we go up into the chariot and come right back down. It's going to we're going to be up there for a while, man. You know, but we don't we don't know how long that will be. You see, and it ain't it, it, it ain't even that important. Just know that when we come down, it's on. Now, verse three says what. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men, 
and he will dwell with them. Now listen, and they shall be his people and the most I himself shall be with them and be their God. You see that? Who does that pertain to? The Israelites. The most I never said this by any other nation. <laughs> you see? Verse 4, And the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the, for the former things have passed away. And there it is. We're going to be taken from this low condition that we're in now to be exalted back to that uh, that glory that we had with Yahweh Shai from the beginning. You see? Showing you the Old Testament and the New Testament going hand in hand. You can't have one without the other, man. But let's go back to this right here and we'll finish it out. Uh, this is a... Uh, so now we got the understanding of the Second Covenant. Like I said, you can go read this also in Hebrews chapter uh, 8 where the Apostle Paul goes into this. Showing you that this hasn't been done away with, man. Showing you that this is going, this is going to be fulfilled. I just want to get these last few verses and then we'll wrap it up. This is uh, Jeremiah 31 and 35. It says, Yahweh provides the sun for light by day, the moon and the stars to shine at night. He stirs up the sea and makes it roar. His name is Yahweh Almighty. He promises that as long as the natural order lasts, so long will Israel be a nation. Showing you that the Israelites have not been done away with for all those who are preaching this bullshit of supersessionism or replacement theology. The Israelites have not been replaced. They will never be replaced because the ordinances of the sun and the moon and the stars, those are, are, are everlasting ordinances. You see? Verse 17 says what? If one, if one day the sky could be measured and the foundations of the earth explored, only then will he reject the people of Israel because of all they have done. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah has spoken. And this is why we see the Edomites sending all type of space vehicles trying to search out the heavens because they're trying to hold the Most High to his word so we can be rejected. But the thing is this, the heavens are constantly and continually expanding. It's continued to be stretched out, and it will be, and it's going to be that way forevermore. So that's something Esau can't accomplish. He's down there trying to search out the the depths of the sea, but guess what? There's too much pressure down there for he he can't create create anything that can withstand that pressure to fulfill this task that the Most High has challenged him with. Why? Is because the Most High was never going to cast off his people anyway. But those those things that you see them going all that split, space exploration. And all that sea exploration, that's all so they can try to have the Israelites be rejected by the Most High. That's why they're doing these things. And they're putting it in the form of documentaries and act like they're doing all this research. No, man, they're trying to get the Israelites destroyed and cast away from the Most High forever. That's what those that's that's what they're doing. So when you see all this all this shit NASA is doing, they sending a space shuttle all the way to the end of the guy. We just left the Milky Way. Milky Way. They're trying to measure the heavens because they, they've read this and they're trying to hold the Most High to His word because they want the Israelites to be rejected as a people by the Most High forevermore. That's why they're doing those things, man. Acting like they're trying to forge humanity. No, they're trying to get the Israelites destroyed. Verse 38 says what? The time is coming, says Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah, when all of Jerusalem will be rebuilt as my city from Han... Hanan, Hananel Tower West to the corner gate and the boundary line will continue from there on the west to the hill of Gareb and then around Goa the entire valley where the dead are burned and garbage is dumped and all the fields above Kidron Brook as far as the horse gate to the east will be sacred to me. The city will never again be thrown down or destroyed. And that's the most I'm talking about taking us back into our land and our land being rebuilt and established forevermore in the earth. This is what we're coming into. And this is the most high unchangeable council, man. It's not going to be changed. It's not going to be altered. It's not being disannulled or canceled. All these things are going to play out here on this earth because the most I said it would. 
You see? So I just wanted to bring that out real quick. Lord willing, that was edifying to the elect. I'm going to end it by giving all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful of let Akim out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, Ba, Ba, Ba.